Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me, Tito Puente Jr., and you're watching FaceTime with my main man, Todd Wharton, right here. Weba! From Times Square in New York City, it's FaceTime with Todd Wharton. With special guest and musical guest, Tito Puente Jr. And now, here is your host, Todd Warden! So welcome to a Puerto Rican edition of FaceTime with Todd Warden. I'm your man, your host, Todd Warden. Wait, Bob! Yeah, that didn't really sound right. You know what? Speaking of not sounding right, I've had this on my mind for a while, and you know what? It's time to talk about it. So I've been working in the restaurant industry for a pretty long time now, and I honestly thought I knew how to speak Spanish. But you know what? I really didn't. And there's a lot of people out there that speak Spanish that have no idea what the hell they're saying. So you know what? This segment right here is called No Habla. Hey, hola, primo. Hey, te gusta bailando en mi culo. What is it? Hey, man. Hey, man. Me swears. Huevo. What? Primo, I don't speak Spanish. I'm Trinidadian. You dumb white boy. Hey, viejo. What did I say? Buenos nachos. Oh my God. It was a great show for you guys tonight. Live recording artist, my man Tito Puente Jr. is in the house. And then later on, Tito's going to be back performing his hit song, Agua Limpio Toto. Yeah, I think I got that right. Right here on FaceTime with Tom Wood. So stick around, and we'll be right back after these messages. Ladies and gentlemen, the brand new album from Tito Puente Jr., The King and I. A tribute to the Mambo King, Tito Puente, featuring Frankie Negron, Jose Alberto El Canario, Domingo Quiñones, Michael Stewart, El Nenique, Yolanda Duque. Ronnie Puente. Tony Vega. Eres Puerto Rico, mi gigante chico, y déjame soñar. Humberto Ramírez. Pete Escobido. And Sheila E. Get the new Salsa Bundle Pack, which includes the compact disc and four brand new hot sauces. Available now at Tito Puente Jr., myshopify.com. Add some salsa into your life with Tito Puente Jr. So welcome back to the show, everyone. So my guest tonight is from Latin Recording Royalty. He is the son of none other than Tito Puente, the king of Latin music. But I'm here to talk to Tito Puente Jr. I met him at the Puerto Rican Day Parade, and I'm excited to speak about his journey up to this point, what he's got going on now, and what he's got going on in the future. Guys, please welcome to the show my man and future Latin king, Tito Puente Jr. Hey, Tito, how you doing, bro? Good to see you, Todd. Thanks for having me on the show. This is a great honor. I'm glad I get to chat with your fans and my fans and everybody watching. Thanks. Thank you guys for tuning in. Of course, of course. Listen, first of all, I'm already checking out the little Puerto Rican Boricua little little yeah. uh, flag you got going on. You know, you know. Lift up your chest. What, what do we got going on? Because I know I represent the old chest. man over here, man. I'm always always got the Tito Puente swag going on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Listen, man, I'm sorry I missed you at the Puerto Rican Day Parade because you already know I was interviewing everybody and you went by. I think I was in the middle of interviewing um Andrew Nevado when you were coming by. And my camera guy's like, ah shit, I think that was Tito Puente. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I looked at Andrea, I'm like, yo, I'm going to cut this. And then she's like, what? And I'm like, no, I'm just playing. But I'm glad we got you on. 
lots to talk about. Um, first of all, let's talk about the parade. How was it to be honored 20 years in, you've been doing this and you got to celebrate it with your peers, colleagues, and the nationality of the Puerto Rican heritage world right in New York City. How was that feeling? Uh, New York is like that melting pot of just uh, multicultural people, flavors. When I think of New York, I think of the Empire State Building. I think of the, um, the Statue of Liberty. I think of Tito Puente. <laughs> Tito Puente is just like one of those staples of New York where he uh, was born and raised in Spanish Harlem. The Puerto yeah. Rican people of Spanish Harlem, El Barrio. It's just one of those uh, uh, great parades that really bring multicultural people together. Not just Puerto Ricans, but everybody, man. Italians and Jewish people and Americans and, and uh, blacks, whites. Browns, Chinese, Japanese, everybody coming for one purpose. That's to enjoy the culture, the rich culture of the New York Hispanic world and the Puerto Rican community on the island. And of course, the Puerto Ricans that are that reside in New York and the Bronx and Spanish Harlem and, and Brooklyn and, and all around the five boroughs and all around the tri-state area of New York. But it's really it was really special for me. I love the people that I always go. I've been doing it for about, I'm going to say since I was a kid. Yeah, so easy. my father was the Grand Marshal numerous times. He was mm -hmm. probably probably the first Puerto Rican parade back in 19, I think it was 40-something. <laughs> um, wow. He was probably, yeah, he was probably the first one, I would think. Um, I know Machito and his Latin uh, Cuban All-Stars were one of the first ones. But my father's always been recognized, always remembered. You always see his image, you hear his music, whether it be those hits of Brand Can Can or Ye Como Va some of those mambo hits of Tito Puente. Uh, his memory is always staple, is a staple in the parade each and every year. So I'll be there uh, till I'm around. I'm teaching my kids to go to the parade. And uh, mm -hmm. it's one of those cultural, New York cultural things that I enjoy doing. And I go on my own dime all the time. And I make sure that the fans recognize and they remember Tito Puente. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was great to see you on a float going by. And I was hearing the music. Hopefully they'll have you perform live on ABC. I can definitely see that happening, coming out soon. Um, in terms of your dad, I mean, the dad was known as the king of the Timbales. And, you know, he was a legend. Now, a lot of people, especially kids, a lot of times they try to go off into a different uh, sector of life, right? Because they want to make their own road. You're doing something that's actually really special and actually really hard to do. And people don't understand how hard it is to continue a legacy of someone that has touched so many lives from around the world. I mean, just imagine if Michael Jackson's kid decided to become the next pop star. That's almost literally impossible to do unless you have a down pat. Tell me how hard it was for you to decide really to transition and to be living your dad's legacy, not just a memory, but continuing the great music that he made. And you must be practicing every single day because those are some pretty big shoes to fill, even though it's your dad, right? Yeah. So tell me about that. Yeah, the, uh, I get the nepotism thing. I've gotten that ever since I was young. Uh, I personally, to be honest with you, Todd, I always was into pop music and rock and hip hop. I think mm -hmm. that's a, uh, just a New York trait that we all have. Yeah. We love different diverse, diversified sounds of music. And my iPod and my cassettes collection, I have a variety of different music in there and whether it be heavy metal or hip hop or rock um i love it all but uh, my father's legacy was something really special he did it over for over 50 years 180 al plus albums you know seven time grammy award winner 14 nominations star in the hollywood Walk of fame i can go on and on the accolades of tito puente and just yeah. incredible um historical career and I felt that after my father's passing in 2000, there was a void missing in music. And I thought that the newer generation should not forget about that and forget about those that came before him. Mm -hmm. like Tito Puente was considered, as you said in the beginning of the show, the king of Latin music. He still is. He has never been dethroned. And we always recognize those pioneers and those people that really cut cut uh, and broke down the barriers and cut down those walls like Celia Cruz, like Johnny Pacheco, like the Fania All-Stars, like Tito Puente. He was there in the era of racism back in yeah. New York in the 1930s and 40s. He was the one fighting for, for the Hispanics and mambo music to be heard on the radio and to be, to, you know, he was, he was going up against the quote unquote man. 
And he yeah. did. And he did that for many, many years throughout his entire career. He was always pushing his music to the boundaries of this planet to go to different countries to share that and be an ambassador of Latin music around the world. My, in my retrospect of my life in traveling with him, I noticed yeah. that people were attracted to my father from his spirit, the spirituality yeah. of being uh, an ambassador of Latin music, bringing people together for one purpose, and that's to dance music. It was never mm -hmm. political. It was never religious. It was always Afro-Cuban music, Puerto Rican style of playing it, and it really brought people to dance for one purpose, and that's to enjoy life uh, for a while, maybe two or three hours during his concerts throughout the rest of the, the turmoil that we have through this planet. And I think that's what the, the message that Tito Puente's music has always left. It's always giving you a good feeling. My last name means bridge in Spanish. Puente means yep. bridge. And that's what I've been doing for the past 24 years since his passing is bridge the new generation to what he has left on this planet about his music and his legacy. So I'm, I'm proud to say that, that after all this time, I'm, it's, it's big shoes to fill, like you said. But I feel yeah. like I'm doing a, a job like a curator for a mm -hmm. museum. And I'm trying to curate his music to make sure kids recognize it, perform the music. Yes, I kind of look like him. I don't have the white hair. But um, I try to bring forth the music that he's left because it's so vitally important to the musician that is trying to become a musician today. Nowadays, mm -hmm. we got drum machines and electronic music and so many different styles. I love hearing the live music, the, the live saxophones, conga mm -hmm. drum, bongos, timbal. It feels so good and it, and it gives kids a new hope. And when they see my father, it's inspiring. And there's the magic word, inspiring. Tito Puente is inspiring. And I keep telling that to the kids today. Yeah, I love it. God, I wish I can hear Miles Davis just one more time live. Speaking oh, man, of yeah. just live music. I mean, you're hitting on those. There's something about hearing a sax or a drum or a timbale or just something played live. And you can see the energy of the person and the passion they're putting into their playing. Um, and to compliment you, Dad, like you were saying, I mean, the song Oye Como Va, which is obviously the biggest hit that everybody knows around the world. Carlos Santana has redone it. Julia Iglesias, Celia Cruz. Um, so many great artists continually doing it. And um, speaking of uh, people that I know and you know, I have to ask you this. Your dad was a part of Mamo Kings, and I'm sure you were around. Did you happen to meet my good friend Alman Asante with Antonio <laughs> Banderas that was on there? I, I heard they just had a great camaraderie on the set. Armand Asante happens to be from my, my, my father. My mother resided in Rockland County. And mm -hmm. Armand was uh, living out that way. And yeah. he was a big fan of Tito Puente. And I could tell you a little story that, that a lot of people don't know is that our, that is Armand Asante playing the timbales in the movie. And he yeah. took some quick lessons. And my dad said, this Italian guy, I don't know if he's going to get the Afro-Cuban feeling. So he pulled him over to the side. He gave him a couple of lessons. And our yeah. mom picked up on it because he knew that dad was such a professional musician. He really wanted to impress Tito Puente. And he did such a fantastic job in the movie. Armando Sante is one of those actors that keeps on giving back. I see him in so many great, great films. And he will be revered as that as the the Castillo brothers, uh, you know, and that movie really uh, catapulted my father's career, along with Armand and Antonio Banderas. You can't forget about him. Antonio oh. Banderas was an unknown at the time. So Armand Asante really like pushed all my father's music and the, the, the acting skill of and creation of, of the sound and of Puente and of course, uh, our Antonio Banderas. He did so much for everybody in that movie. And it was nice to see that yeah, he gave back by playing a little bit of drums with dad. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. love that. I love it, man. And kudos to everybody that was in that movie. Such a great movie. Now, you mentioned you're the bridge. I'm going to tell you something right now. I, it just came to my head. How do you say bridge in the gap in, in Spanish? Well, uh, I would say junto de puente, which is together bridges. That's, that's kind of more of a transition. Great. Juntos well, puente. you know what? That should be your next album. Possibly, title, yeah. <laughs> bridging the gap in Spanish, because yeah. if you're looking to bring all the Gen Zs and all the generations together and bridge that gap, I think that would be a great title for an album, like your next album. Now, speaking of your next album, I know you had an album released. Um, it was called Got Mambo, okay? Yes. 
I believe this is your first album where you're still showing love to your pop, but you're also making a name for yourself or bringing in some different type of music. Tell me about how you came to getting this album off the ground and what inspired you to bring different, you know, eclectic genres into your music as well. Yeah, I genre. consider that album kind of my first album. My actual first recording of Tito Puente music came out right after he passed away and I did a tribute album of a lot of his hit songs called In My Father's Shoes. But right. I was um, I was using my father's orchestra at the time. But Got Mambo mm -hmm. is a record that I felt was more I branched out because I put more original songs on it mm -hmm. and I played original material on the record along with tributing some of the songs to Tito Puente as well. Uh, but it was one of those um, records that I wanted to dabble into Latin jazz. My father was very popular in the Latin jazz world, along with Eddie mm -hmm. Palmieri and Pete Escobedo mm -hmm. and all those great, great Pancho Sanchez. Um, my father dabbled in that and did very well in that market. So I wanted to do some Latin jazz with the Got Mambo record and I found some great um, arrangers and I put together a, a great compilation of nine songs that really shined a light on Tito Puente. And then of course I branched out with my own style of playing Latin jazz music and people kind of, the critics, it's more like a critically acclaimed type of yeah. record than more of a hit record. Um, of course, naturally everybody would like to hear those great hits, but yeah, think about it, Todd. Tito Puente had over a hundred plus records I mean, I could cherry pick so much music. I could pull Breck. I mean, we have a vault in New York where there's all the, the music is there and it's just way too much. So I, mm -hmm. I got to give it to my father. He really left a big catalog of music where I can actually redo songs from 1940 or 50s or 60s, remake them, and they'll sound fresh and brand new. But uh, I, I have some material for a, for a new route record. I can do Got Mambo Volume 1, 2, 3, or 4. Of course. I mean, there's so much music, and I didn't realize how much um, music that he did leave until we went into the vault and saw that. And not only that, but he left symphonic music, where Tito Puente actually took music and made it for a symphony. And that's something that we're going to dabble into, too, as well. That sounds really cool, man. I'm sure there's music in there that people may have never even heard. And it yeah. seems a lot of legendary people have done so much music that they never got a chance to actually put it out because when it comes to the business world, getting every song mastered, published, right? It becomes a lot where a lot of great songs get stuck in the vault. And maybe part of your legacy to do that is to bring that great music out, make it your own with your dad's spirit behind it and just kill it. And it's fresh because if we haven't heard it, whether it's from 1920, 1910, you bring it out in 2020, it's brand new, right. you know? And I think that's a cool story. And I'm telling you, bridge the gap. <laughs> yeah, bridge the gap. I'm, I'm taking that into consideration, man. I'm also thinking about maybe using that for, our, for putting on a shirt or something. <laughs> yeah, or bridge the gap tour, like Tito Puente yeah. Jr. travels the world, bridging the gap amongst everybody. Sure. And bringing the generations world to generations. Music. Yeah, I'd love it. Now, I did see a quick video. I got a cap on this. I think my brother was at this game. Tell me how it was to play at Madison Square Garden during halftime under the sun of the garden, right? Yeah. The, the mecca of where everybody wishes they can play once. Yeah. Tell me how that felt, man. Well, I played at Madison Square Garden um, before with my father. My dad sold out Madison Square Garden, I believe, over 10 times throughout his entire career. So that that's a big, big feat. If you walk down the halls of the garden and backstage, you'll see a picture of Tito Puente, and of course, yeah. Mark Anthony. Very few Latin artists can sell out that arena and that that coliseum i call it um yeah. but went there was one of the first latin artists to do that and mm -hmm. to be on that stage was just incredible but making it more like putting like a uh, cherry on top of the icing playing for a new york well performing for a new york team like the new york mix made it even more special for me mm -hmm. Um, very exciting, really exciting at the Eddie Torres Jr. dancers there. We did it during Hispanic Heritage Month and 
it, it was something really special for me. And I was very honored to be asked to perform in that building once again in honor of my father, Tito Puente, as his name is etched into that building like no other Hispanic or Latin musician from New York. You got Billy Joel and Tito Puente. They can sell out that garden, you know, and it's yeah. amazing to see that and to feel that too. And speaking of that, um, this week uh, I'm going to be doing something with the ladies of the WNBA. And I'll be performing in Brooklyn at the Barclays right. Center and doing the halftime for them. So not only the New York Knicks, I'm going to do the, the New York Liberty. Those girls are really shining high, and it's nice to see the Brooklyn's – uh, bringing you know basketball to that that stage there, Barclays Center. Oh, that's incredible, man! Yeah. Wait, what what date is this happening? I'm doing that on September 15th to kick off Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, and I'm really excited about it. I'll be doing the halftime with my buddies Eddie Torres Jr. and we'll be of course tributing Tito Puente and kicking off Hispanic Heritage Month with the New York Liberty versus the Minnesota Lynx, the WNBA game. Uh, it's a matinee game, but I think it's sold out already. And that Barclays Center fits a lot of people in there. So it'll be all my Brooklyn friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. congratulations on that. That's Thanks. incredible. Especially the WNBA. Like, they're exploding right now. Yeah, you know, one thing. You're, you're, you're goosebumps when you were walking onto that court, knowing you are yeah. about to perform. Yeah. Tell me those goosebumps, bro. Even though you're a professional, you have to have <laughs> something popping out all over the place. Yeah. I, cool. I just started that one because I knew there was a routine and then we go there four hours before we rehearse it. The cheerleaders are there. The teammates are there. Uh, I think Carmelo was there that day. Uh, he was still yeah. on the team at the time. Uh, so it was nice to see him. And, and of course, the celebrities. You know, you got Spike Lee and all the guys on the sidelines. And uh, it was great. And it was just very, very magical. But I knew the spirit of my father was there because you can feel that roar of the crowd, the, yeah. the people enjoying the game, and then the halftime. It was funny. They were telling me that I was one of the halftime shows that people didn't go up to get up and go take a leak. <laughs> they were like, hey, you know what? They actually stayed in their seats and they watched you. So I was very surprised at hearing that from the um, MSG people, from Master Square Garden folks. So hopefully uh, at the WNBA game, they'll do the same and enjoy uh, a great halftime. Well, I think they're going to love it. And hopefully – they get to taste your hot picante salsa Ooh. that I know. Yeah, and I'm throwing a segue in there, guys. Yo, Yo you got to put some salt up. on your hot sauce. <laughs> I got to wow. get, get you some of this hot sauce. You're going to love it. <laughs> oh, my God. We're, we're definitely going to link up in that. Now I'm doing that segue into that. I, I have to ask this. Like, you know, I'm, when I look up people, I'm doing a lot of this research and trying to find out what, what to talk about. I'm looking at this thing I'm like, wait, this guy went from Latin music to salsa picante hot stuff. Yeah. And all the ladies are like, oh, this man got some picante. Let's get <laughs> going here. No man, more sasso, man. It was a natural transition to to just play salsa music and then, of course, create some salsa. But I got to give credit to my wife. You know, when we were in the lockdown a couple of years ago, she said, you know, why don't you do something that you always wanted to do? And I always said, man, it'd be great to do a hot sauce. I'm a hot sauce fanatic and I love it. And I was putting it on my food and my kids are like looking at me like, why don't you just make your own, dad? And yeah. I ended up coming up with my own brand. Um, it's Cito Puente Junior Hot Sauce. I got four different flavors. Um, I sold a ton of them online during the pandemic. Uh, reason being because everybody was listening to music and eating a lot at the time. And, and it did very, very well. So now I take it around the world. I go to hot sauce conventions. I sell these things at my concerts. People just go crazy for them. Some people just get it just for collector's item. But I personally like them. They're great on all kinds of foods, beef, chicken, pork. Steak, they're friendly, um, non-GMO, vegan friendly, um, the natural ingredients, they're all freshly made. And um, I'm excited about that. You can pick them up at Tito Puente Junior Hot.com. And I sell them with a t-shirt and all that little swag, but people and kids and 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 everybody's kind of on that hot sauce thing. I thought music and food go together. I, in the Hispanic culture, it definitely does. So I wanted to put something out, but check them out, man. I'm gonna send you a couple of them and Make sure you have it with a meal. <laughs> Don't eat it just well, raw. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to do one of those game shows like where they sit there. And nah. Nah. Yeah, I, you see, I can't milk. do that. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm Italian, all right? We have a different flavor when it comes to spices. Like if it's right. garlic, cool. If it's really hot, 
take my ass out the kitchen because I'm about to crap a whole lot of Slurpees into that bathroom if I keep doing this hot stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm right. just saying. But I think it's a cool segue what you're doing. Hot salsa because you perform salsa. Yeah. The Mambo. I like it. I think yeah. it's a very cool vibe. We yeah. already know where they can buy that. Where can the best place that people can follow you so they know what's going on with you? Man, Todd, I'm uh, very into social media. You know that. And mm -hmm. I'm on my social media, always um, follow me on Instagram, on X, Twitter, um, Facebook. Uh, and then I'm doing TikTok. I have a TikTok page too. So I'm very engaged with the fans. And I usually post things two or three times a day. A lot of people, a lot of celebrities, a lot of musicians don't really do that. They have somebody doing it for them. But right. I love the fans and the authenticity of of, of engaging with the fans one-on-one -on -one gives my brand and the Tito Puente brand something, a lot of leverage when I'm selling something, whether it be swag, hot sauce, music, and concerts. Um, the people love that. And I do ticket giveaways all the time. I do hot sauce giveaways. I, I engage the fans. I think that's what's missing in a lot of these uh, these uh, social media sites with influencers that they, they, they're not as, as, uh, attainable. And with the Latin music world, it's even more so. It's very difficult to reach out to someone like a Julio Iglesias or Mark Anthony or someone, you know, that's very out there and they have a lot of layers to them, management, yeah. booking agents, things of that nature. With me, you can just reach out to me. I'm, I'm very open to that. And, hey, how are you? How you doing? And uh, this is where I'm at. This is where I'll perform. Please come by. Please come check me out. And I always remember everybody. And that's one thing. I'm like an elephant. My father was like that. If you ever met Tito Puente and walked down the streets of New York, he'd say hello to everybody. He'd remember your name. He'd give you a high five, a hug, take a picture. Um, and it's it's very enamoring. And I got that humbleness from my dad. And he, I appreciate that. And that's why he lasted so long in this business. And you think about it, a lot of artists just come and go, one hit wonders. And you know, to have over 100 albums, have a 50-year career, that takes a genuine person and a genuine musician to have people he was never really disliked, maybe by the IRS, but that's about <laughs> it. But, you know, those are the only ones that he kind of avoided. But everybody yeah. else was so enamored with Tito Puente, and I think I portray that and I give that to the fans, and I, I enjoy uh, chatting with people. So just follow me on my social media. I'll reach out to you all the time. I will say hello. I've always – uh, engaged with my fans and I appreciate all the fans that do follow me and enjoy the music of my late father and myself too. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, X and TikTok. You can follow me right there and, and check out the swag at Tito Puente Junior Hot.com. Do I have a website? A lot of people have asked me about that. So do you have a website we can go to? Um, I feel like the social media is really where it's at. If it's, you guys want to know what city I'm going to be at or where I'm going to be performing next, I am usually put ticket links and I put up flyers and I tell people and I try to, um, you know, I center around what city I'm going to go to. For instance, I'm going to Los Angeles tomorrow. I center my social media pages towards LA to all my fans over there. And whoever's in that area kind of picks it up. You know how it works. And, uh, and I, uh, I cater to them, you know, and I make sure that they come on out and they get the best show possible. And then of course, New York city, they got so much love over there in New York simply because of that's where we're born. And uh, every time I come to New York, it's just, it's just magic. And I love meeting new people. I see it. The audience is getting younger, Todd. They're getting younger. I love that. They're, I'm, I see moms and dads, grandma and grandpa bringing the 11-year-olds, the 10-year-olds, the 8-year-olds. I love that because you're teaching these kids about Latin music. You're teaching them about Celia Cruz, Tito Puente, the culture, and the inspiration that Tito Puente had on, on all musicians and everybody, uh, all his fans, too. It's really, really, really great. But follow me at those places, and uh, I'll tell you more about it. I love it. Listen, you actually just answered what I was about to ask. So I love that. You just, we think you know, alike. We I think said, alike. <laughs> I love it. This guy's done interviews before, so I'm just going to lay back and, and do my thing. <laughs> no, but listen, congratulations on your career that I feel is only just begun because not only are you continuing the legacy of your father, not letting it be a memory, but letting it be a, a constant thing in people's head that this is great music. But now you're slowly putting steps into your own music. Always Tito Puente will be there, but you're doing your own brands with salsa, you're bridging the gaps, 
He'll perform at the Barclays Center, LA, and all over the world. So Tito Puente Jr., congratulations to you on doing that. I think that's a great feat. And thank you for being our guest on FaceTime with Todd Ward, man. I appreciate you. Man, I appreciate you too, Todd. Thank you for having me on the show. I look forward to seeing you when I come up to uh, NYC. I got some tickets for you and I got some caliente hot sauce for you. <laughs> and you're gonna enjoy, yeah. man. I got a nice shirt for you. Gotta give me a size too and I'll, I'll hook you up with I'm some I'm a large, tea. man. Well, I'm a big man. I'm a big man. I'm a large. All right, so I, I, got you. I got you. That's right. So hot sauce, tickets, yeah. Tito Puente, and a t-shirt. Guys, stick around. Because we're going to be right back because this man right here has got a song that he's about to perform right here on FaceTime with Todd Warden. So stick around. Ladies and gentlemen, the brand new album from Tito Puente Jr., The King and I. A tribute to the Mambo King, Tito Puente, featuring Frankie Negron. Jose Alberto El Canario. 20 años de su rumba. Domingo Quiñones. Y aquí llegó Tito Puente Jr. Michael Stewart. El Nenique. Oye, señora. Yolanda Duque. Aguacero de mayo que va a caer. Ay, mira, no me va a mojar. Ronnie Puente. Tony Vega. Eres Puerto Rico, mi gigante chico y déjame soñar. Humberto Ramírez. Pete Escobedo. And Sheila E. Get the new Salsa Bundle Pack, which includes the compact disc and four brand new hot sauces. Available now at Tito Puente Jr. MyShopify.com. Add some salsa into your life with Tito Puente Jr. Hey, what's up, buddy? It's me, Tito Puente Jr. Check out my new video right here. This one's called Agua Limpia Todo with FaceTime with Todd Wharton. Wepa!
So I just want to take a moment and thank my guest and, of course, musical guest, Tito Plane Jr., brother. Thank you for being on the show. I know you're touring around the world, but I appreciate you stopping by. And congratulations, brother. I know how hard it is to step into those type of shoes and continue the legacy of such an amazing person who made such an impact, not just in the Latin community, but in all communities, your father, Tito Puente. But I think you're doing a hell of a job, brother. Congratulations on your success up to this point. Guys, definitely follow him on all social media platforms. You can see where he's touring. You get to listen to some great music. And I can't wait to go see him live as well because been a fan before but i'm even more of a fan right now so thank you tito for being again on the show guys i hope you enjoyed this episode you know i did but until the next time if you're not living a passionate life it means like you live take care guys i'll see you soon